Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at what is meant by economic efficiency. So when you're looking at the trade-off between equity and efficiency, you need to have a really strong definition of what's meant by economic efficiency and what are the benefits for economic efficiency for our living standards. So whenever you hear the word economic efficiency, basically what you need to be thinking about are that resources, so land, labour and capital, any time you hear the word resources, land, labour and capital, are used to produce the goods and services that maximise society's general well-being. So it implies that goods and services are produced at the minimum cost, so we're producing things as productively as possible, but we're also producing the goods and services that are maximising society's well-being. So when efficiency rises, more output can be gained from the same or smaller quantity of resources, so it implies we're being more productive with our resources, but also using them in a manner that maximises society's well-being. Resources are used to produce particular goods and services that maximise society's well-being, it implies that goods and services are produced at the minimum cost. Um, when efficiency rises, more output can be gained from the same or smaller quantity of resources. Australian industries are using resources productively to produce goods and services, are being used to produce the right goods and services, and goods and services are in society's best interests. So we're not producing things that have negative implications for society, like things like drugs and things like that. So when we're talking about efficiency, um, we're talking about generally about working on our PPF, so at, when we're being technically efficient, we're maximising our use of our, our output per unit of input. If we're producing at these points in here, then we are not maximising efficiency. That should be a small thing. This point here is not attainable. Okay. Unfortunately, sometimes when we promote too much equity, that can lead to us working within our PPF because you know, some people might choose not to work as hard if there's more generous welfare, and therefore that will lead to um, unemployment or underutilisation of resources. So sometimes there is a trade-off between the two. Whenever you hear the word allocative efficiency, we're talking about a nation's resources being allocated in combination to provide the maximum possible benefits for consumers and the nation. So nation, the resources are being used to produce the best possible combination of goods and services that maximises society's welfare. So we're shifting our scarce resources into areas that the consumers value the most highly, and we're also working productively. Okay, so when we're looking at allocative efficiency, um, it might not be the same for all nations, so it depends on what societies value. So an allocatively efficient allocation of resources may be different for different countries, but it implies that the right goods and services are being produced, and that consumers and society satisfaction is maximised. Um, generally, the price mechanism is quite good at doing this, and we'll talk about that in the next video, because um, scarce resources, resources will go to where they're in demand. So for example, if there's an increase in demand for chocolate, um, resources are more likely to be allocated towards chocolate because that's where you've got to get the higher relative profits. So consumers will generally have their needs met. But there are instances where the price mechanism does not optimise society's wants or market failures um, because um, for a whole range of different reasons. So consumers' living standards may not be maximised because um, there's a lack of competition between firms and therefore like oligopolies, monopolies try and raise their prices to try and maximise their profits. That can be a negative. We could, we'll also talk about other market failures as well. Technical efficiency, a nation's resources are producing the maximum amount possible at the lowest cost, so we're maximising our productivity. We're maximising the amount of output per unit of input. So we're assuming that we're using the most efficient production techniques, um, that we're minimising costs, and we're using our natural labour and capital resources to maximise our output. So, for example, if it's cheaper and more efficient to use robots to manufacture cars, then labour would be replaced because it'd be more technically efficient to use robots in the production process. Um, the difference in price between labour and capital is generally determined on how relatively scarce the two resources are. But technical efficiency is about maximising output or production per level of input. Benefits of achieving allocative and technical efficiency. Greater efficiency helps to lift production and therefore promotes more higher incomes. So incomes are generated through higher production. If we increase our efficiency, that should lead to increased real GDP growth and therefore higher average incomes. Um, if we can maximise output per unit of input, then we can grow our nation's productive capacity. If GDP and production increases faster than population, then we'll experience higher real GDP per capita or incomes per person. So increased productivity, this is the key relationship. Increased productivity, one, leads to increased output, two, which leads to higher average incomes, assuming that that output grows faster than population growth. Increased efficiency leads to lower prices, 
um, because we're generating more output per unit of input, that should lead to lower prices, which helps to slow inflation and boost our purchasing power. It also leads to more jobs because the reduction in production costs, it should make our firms more competitive. So we lower the prices because we're more productive and that would lead to higher sales, which will generate increased aggregate demand. So businesses can expand and that creates new jobs and less unemployment. So increased efficiency boosts real GDP, leads to lower prices and leads to more jobs and employment. It also leads to a stronger trade balance. So what we mean by that is if we're more productive, we can lower our prices and therefore we can generate more money in export income um, because of the impact of those low prices. It can also lead to better non-material living standards, mainly because it leads to less unemployment and therefore unemployment can be associated with things like crime and family breakups. So if we can reduce unemployment by becoming more productive, um, that can lead to better non-material living standards. Thank you.